I'm excited because in this video, I want to show you my favorite Photoshop plugin for skin retouching. Over the past year, I've been using Retouch for me to speed up my workflow, but also to relieve a lot of stress. I do a lot of work at my school from the basketball portraits. I've already photographed four teams already, and I got another four teams waiting for me. And so I had to figure out ways to speed up little tedious things like blemish removal, nice little skin retouching, and just adding a little bit more depth to my portraits. But how could I do that in just a short span? And this is where Retouch for me really comes in the clutch. In this video, I'm gonna show you the three different plugins that I've been utilizing. From the heal feature that automatically detects the problem areas in the skin and removes all of the blemishes so that we get the skin looking great. Then we'll look at the dodge and burn plugin that's gonna help lighten and darken certain areas of the skin to get the skin nice and smooth. But the best part is that it keeps all of the texture so it looks natural. And then we'll look at how I'm utilizing portrait volumes so that I can add depth and dimension to my portraits. Let's go ahead and cover todo el pedo. On this first image, I wanna show you the final results of what Retouch for me did. So if I zoom in here, this is the before and then the after with no adjustments from me. Literally just doing the clicks for heel, dodge and burn and portrait volumes. Let's look at how they're working individually. So here's the heel. Let me zoom in so you can really see these results. Before and then the after. Then the dodge and burn. Just smoothening out the skin by lightening up the dark areas and the light areas. And then the portrait volumes, which adds that nice depth and dimension. So this is the before. And then the after. And I'm gonna go ahead and delete this because I wanna show you how to build this up on your own. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete this layer. And the first step when you're working with Retouch For Me, there's different methods, by the way. There is this new panel that's free. So if you do get Retouch For Me, it does come with this panel that you can download on the website and it's absolutely free. So you don't have to make all these layers, but I'll show you that method in a little bit. So I'm gonna show you the original method, which I'm gonna go ahead and make a copy of the background layer. And then I'm gonna to go to filter, retouch for meme, and then I'm gonna go heal. And you might think, well, Eli, the healing process, man, that's that's easy, it's, it's not that difficult. But yes, it adds a lot of time, especially with me, when I work with my basketball teams, especially the girls, that's the first thing they tell me is, Mr. Infante, can you remove the blemishes, any pimples or anything like that on the face? And it adds up, you, you know, you're talking about anywhere between two to five minutes, depending on, the person's skin, I use this plugin, it reduces the time in half easily, maybe even, probably even more, I'm gonna be honest, okay? Now that that's loaded, by the way, when you do open it up, it's gonna ask you, do you want it to automatically detect the human, uh, you know, the human subject? You can also say, you know what, this is a close-up portrait, a half-length portrait or a full-length portrait, but typically I leave it on auto. And as far as these settings over here, I never really mess with. You do have a brush and an eraser, so you can erase where it's detecting the blemishes. Um, there is one up here where the sensitivity, this just adjust the sensitivity of how many blemishes it's looking for more often than not. I leave it at 100, I'm gonna be honest. As you can see down here, you can see that it is detecting a little bit of the dress, but that's okay. I can erase that in a moment. I'm gonna show you why this make mask feature is important. So you definitely wanna check mark this make mask feature, okay? Now when I zoom in, I can use the scroll wheel on my mouse. You can always look at the before and after here. So if you want to, of course, you can adjust the sensitivity. I'm gonna leave mine at 100. I'm gonna make sure that I have make mask. And real easily, I've been able to remove all of the blemishes with just a simple click there. Now, once I apply that, that's why this make mask feature was important because now it's on its own layer. And if I hold Alt and click the eyeball, you'll see that these are the areas that it's automatically detected for me, all right? Now, as we know, there's nothing that's wrong down here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm simply just gonna select it. And I'm gonna rename this just so we can say organize. I'm gonna name this heel. And if there's any areas that maybe got affected that I didn't want, it's simple. Just get the eraser and just simply erase it. So in my case, you'll see that I've already removed those areas and I've already retained the skin on the face. Now, 
Now that I'm done with my heal, what I want to run next is my dodge and burn. So I'm going to press Control Shift Alt E to make a merged copy at the top. I'm going to name this D and B for dodge and burn. I was way off. BR. I'm going to go D and B. There you go. And I'm going to go to filter, retouch for meme, and we're going to go dodge and burn. Now, as you guys know, dodge and burn can be a very tedious process. It can take anywhere between five to 30 minutes. And if you want to do high end retouching, it could take some people hours. I'll tell you this much. When I do my workshops and I teach people dodge and burn, a lot of people give me this dead stare in the eyes like, oh my gosh, this is difficult. This is a lot of work. And they're always looking for faster ways of retouch, uh, retouching. And so lately, a lot of my past attendees have been reaching out to me. It's like, hey, Eli, do you have any tips in order to help speed up my, my workflow? And I've been recommending them retouch for me and they've absolutely been loving it. Now, when I do run Dodge and Burn, you'll see that I get the same dialog box. It says auto. I have the close-up feature, medium shot or full body. I leave mine on auto. I'm also going to leave up on the screen when I show you each image how long it took to do the heal, the dodge and burn, and the portrait volume so you guys can get a general idea of how much time I'm actually saving running these actions. But keep in mind that this retouch for me is going to be the time that it saves. It's going to be based on how fast your computer is and also how many megapixels um, you're using. Now, in this case, the same thing with dodge and burn. Usually on the blending, I usually leave mine at 100. So I'm going to pull it back from 120 to 100. And then you have a brush and an eraser if I wanted to reduce the areas that it's kind of choosing from. Here I can get a preview, which I, lo I love this feature because it's showing you exactly where it is dodging and burning. And so once again, if I wanted to increase the sensitivity of where it's doing dodge and burn, I can increase this. So I can go to 125 if I wanted to. Actually, let's go all the way to 200 so you could see how much more detailed it's going to be. But the skin might look a little bit too, um, too fake. So in my case, I'm going to go about 125. Now, if I do push it a little bit more than I want, it's okay. Because I have the ability to use opacity after I apply this, which is awesome. Now, I'm going to also make sure up here that it has the checkbox for soft light layer. And then I'm going to go ahead and click apply so that it once again makes it on its own separate layer. And the reason why all of this stuff is important is that this is going to give me the ability to adjust the opacity. So in my case, you can see that it's showing me the dodge and burn on where it's added it. So the white areas are where it's lightened it. And then the darker areas is where it's darkening. So I'm going to go from normal. You need to change the blend mode to soft light. And this is what I was talking about. Usually when I'm using the opacity slider, I usually reduce it back to about 85%. And so we got the before and then the after. And then the last one that I would work with would be portrait volume. So I'm going to press Control Shift Alt E. I'm going to name this volume. And right now you're probably thinking, Eli, this is too much work, dude. You're having to make a layer for heal, dodge and burn volume. Don't worry. I'm going to show you an action that does this automatically for us in a little bit. And then, of course, I'm going to show you the panels. So stay tuned because this is not going to be as much work as it seems. I just want to show you how these individual features work. So now I want to add a little bit of depth to my portrait. I'm going to go to filter. I'm going to go to retouch for meme. And I'm going to go portrait volumes. And as you guys know, it's going to also give me the same features with the close-up of the face. So in this case, you know what? Since I haven't been, uh, uh, I've been living on auto, I'm going to do half length just for the heck of it. So I put half length for detection. And I'm going to wait for it to load. And then if there's one that I feel looks a little bit fake, it would definitely be the portrait volumes. Now, this is one where I still leave it at 100% blend, blending. And here's the preview. So it's showing me where it's actually going to be brightening and darkening. So the green or yellowish area is going to brighten up the, those sections. And then the blue is darkening it up. So you can look at the original. This is the original. And this is the after. My opinion, it's a little bit too much of an effect. But that's why it's important to have the soft light layer checkboxed. Then I'm going to hit apply. And because I've enabled that checkbox, 
I'm going to change the blend mode to soft light. This gives me the ability to now go to the opacity and lower it down to somewhere reasonable like 20. Now, I like to be very subtle with this portrait volumes. I don't want it to be too much. So it's very, very subtle. As you can see, I'm not adding too much to the actual portrait for the final results. So I'm going to hit the little eyeball before and then the after. So that's how the individual panels work. Now, once again, you're probably thinking, Eli, bro, that's, that's a lot of work. And not only are you having to run each uh, plug-in, but then you're reducing the opacity. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's why you can also utilize your actions. So I'm going to be giving away this action. So if you want to use this, you can. But I've made an action based on all of these plugins. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and let me just move this out so I can make this a little bit smaller. There we go. And so all of that work, I made a preset and I hit the play button and it's automatically going to rename everything, set the opacity for me. And I can utilize this on multiple images if I wanted to. All right, so I've already ran the action. As you can see here, I've already, usually for portrait volumes, I like about an opacity around 25, dodge and burn, opacity at 80, and then of course the heel. And what's great is that I already, it, the action already makes the folder for me, labels everything. So every time I get an image, I can simply run this action and the image is already done. So let's take a look at a couple of different images. Let's look at now, a beauty shot and let's see how retouch for me did so if we zoom in here because you know it's one thing to see like just one image as an example but what if you do beauty work you do studio you do outdoors I want to show you a variety of ways on how retouch for me works so if we look at here I'm going to take off all the layers let's look at how the heel did heel did a fantastic job now there's a couple of areas that are questionable like do I want to keep the natural uh, blemish here and once again it's easy if I want to just get the eraser tool bring it back if needed here's the dodge and burn that it did and then here is the portrait volume so if I zoom out let's go about right here this is the before and then the after looks great for a beauty portrait then let's look at a male model let's look at oh look at that and so let's look at this male model here and let's see how it works with a male subject and so I'm going to zoom in here, and this is the final results. And let me take off all of the layers. So let's look at the heel here. And you'll see that it removed the blemishes. And it did struggle a little bit with the glasses here, as you can see. But still, easy fix here. Once again, I can simply just get the heel layer, erase it, and it's been fixed. Then we got the dodge and burn. And then the portrait volumes. And then once again, before and then the after, before and after. Let's look at another image. This image is one using off-camera flash outdoors. And same thing, let's build it up from the beginning. Let's zoom in here. Now, one piece of feedback that I would give to the Retouch For Me team is that I would love to see a flyaway uh, plugin because I got all these flyaways. I would love to see that. But let's look at the heel here. Did a pretty good job. Dodge and burn. And then, of course, the portrait volumes. Now, once again, it did looks like it did miss this blemish here. If I wanted to, I could always come back and do it myself if needed. So let me just come in here and go ahead and fix that. And there we go. And so before and then the after. And I have a couple more images. Here's another beauty shot. So if I go here, here's the heel. Let's zoom in. The before and then the after of the heel. The dodge and burn. And then the portrait volumes. Zooming out before and after, before, after. And I believe I have two more images to kind of demonstrate. So here's another off-camera flash shot. I'm going to zoom in. And this is the heel that it's done, which in this image did a great job. Dodge and burn, and then portrait volumes, everything as a whole, before and then the after. 
Now that I've shown you some final results with Retouch for Me, I do want to talk about the panel that you can also download that is free. So there is the individual method that I show you, showed you at the beginning where you can make the layers and do it individually as you see fit. You can also run the Photoshop action if you want that. That's going to be linked in the description. I'm going to go ahead and delete this, and I want to show you the panel. So if you get the panel, you can automatically select what you want to use, which in my case, the only ones that I have is Heal, Dodge and & Burn, and Portrait Volumes. All I need to do is get my image, just highlight in blue the ones that I want to run, and as soon as I run that, it's going to run all three of them together and it's going to individually make layers for each different section. Now, a piece of feedback that I would give to retouch for me with this panel, I absolutely love it. It's great. The only thing that I wish that you could do was have an opacity slider. So as I chose, let's say dodge and burn, I wish that I could have adjusted, maybe put it at 85 and then portrait volumes, set it to 20. Because after this action runs or this panel runs, it's going to put everything at 100% opacity. I'll still need to go back and tweak it, which can be a good and bad thing. But in my opinion, I like running my action instead because it will automatically adjust the opacities. Now that the panel's run, I'm going to go ahead and collapse it. And what's cool is it will automatically name the layers for me. It will also make individual layers. Now, the only feedback, like I mentioned, is the opacity is automatically set to 100. Now, I can adjust it here, of course, but that's just an extra step. And then the portrait volumes, you know that it goes a little bit overboard. So in my case, I would put it at 20. And then I would have to make a group so that I can see the before and after all together. So I hit the eyeball before and then the after. So with all these different results, I hope you guys are seeing the benefit and why I love using this plugin to save me time. Now comes the question, well, how much does this cost? Well, as at the time of recording, the heel comes in at $124. The Dodge and Burn plugin comes in at $149. And the Portrait Volumes comes in at $124. Now, I know a lot of people's reactions when they see this is going to be like, Eli, that's outrageous. That's super expensive you're crazy. That's like ridiculous. The thing you got to understand is that if you're just a hobbyist photographer and you just do photo shoots here and there, then yes, you're going to be spending way more than you need to. You have to understand from my perspective, being somebody that has a full-time job that's trying to do YouTube, that does high volume work at school with not only do I do all of the teams every once in a while, I do clients, I do faculty members at my school all of this stuff adds up. And if I can help speed up my workflow and reduce the amount of stress that I have, I'm certainly going to make that investment. And once again, there's a lot of times when I was teaching my workshops and I'm teaching people how to do this, it goes over their head. They look at me like they're going to just faint because it's a lot of things to remember. And so this might be a great alternative if somebody doesn't want to have to do a lot of retouching all of their on their own and they want to do all of the hard labor that's involved. Now I will say though, if you do buy this plugin, it is important that you still understand how to actually do all of these steps on your own in the sense of knowing how the patch tool works, how to use the healing brush, how to do dodge and burn individually because if you're just buying these actions and don't know how to use Photoshop at all, I think it's not going to be a great investment, but if you're trying to speed up your workflow, this can be fantastic. And one of the things that I forgot to mention was because everything is individually layered with the dodge and burn, I can simply come back and let's say that I do want to add a little bit more brightness. If I know how the process works, it's a non-destructive way of working. I can come in here and I can still brighten up areas if I wanted to. If I wanted to, I could switch it to black, darken up the cheekbones if I wanted to, and make those changes. So it is very important that you still know how this process works. The good news is, is the folks at Retouch for Me have given me a 20% off discount code. If you guys use Retouch 20 Eli, you will get 20% off each individual plugin. Now, if I had to recommend Eli, what are the must-have plugins? It would definitely be the heel and the dodge and burn. 
I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And I do want to thank Retouch For Me for sponsoring this video. You guys have a beautiful day. And I will see you guys on the next one.